Alright, here we go. Yeah. Welcome to the Coffee Bean Experience. My name's Isaiah. My name's Dave. Dave, Dave. Don't forget, Dave. I don't what? want to just be a plain Dave. Camera's up there, Dave. Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't care about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know where the camera is, dark. <laughs> so we got a okay. new setup. and um, Yes, we did. And yes, uh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. going to flip it around on you. A little bit. Um, Maybe. Maybe yeah. a little bit. I can't. So will that, how you just flipped the camera, will it, will that, uh, is that occur in the YouTube? That's actually filming? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. That's going. Cool. All right. Yeah, so in, in the future, if we want to, we could have this camera recording me and then that camera recording you, and then like. Yeah, except yeah. for let's do that. Okay, that's buddy, fine. Buddy, so I can be in both, <laughs> pal. Okay, You're that's just fine. Flip it in, just want to do a solo <laughs> shot of you. Maybe. All right, so anyway, so mm. I've, I've got an interesting topic I'm going to throw at you. Um, and I've been in a debate with an assistant coach of mine. Oh. And so I have a question for you. Okay. Do you think, what do you think plays the greatest factor in... Pick any category, athlete, musician, CEO of a company, to be a truly great athlete or to be a truly great musician, do you think it can just be learned and achieved by hard work? Or do you think that there's a certain genetic influence um, involved in in somebody's success in their future outcome? So I'm going to break in here by saying I think that I think that if you have no like – if you have n- your parents aren't like genetically made up to like be athletic, I you think you don't have to have it right on your. Remember, it gets well, slurry when your your mouth is right on it. I think that um, I think that there yes, there is a portion of it where um, some of it has to be genetic. Like speed, for example, you can train that up to a point. Like you can train your stamina, you can train a little bit of how fast you can run, but you can't like a lot of that is genetic. I mean, would you say? Wouldn't you say that too? I I'm, I want your opinion first. So okay. what I'm what I want to clarify is how what percentage would you say is genetic, and what okay. can be learned, what can be um, I th- achieved. If I had to work. give you a percentage without really breaking it down, yeah, just, I would yeah, say like, it's we're probably not it's probably probably seventy no sixty five thirty five. Which for what sixty five genetic, thirty five devotion. Um, maybe hard maybe hard work, maybe uh, 60, 40, sixty forty. To be 40. more honest with you, because I think I think a lot of it has to do with your genetic makeup. Because if your parents so, aren't genetically made up, like to be athletic, like for example, you, you mom was kind of athletic. No offense right. to mom, it's just like right. right. But you actually played like college, pretty much professional sports. So like, you're gonna have more of a an athletic genetic makeup. Right. So, but so now let's go into so. Let's go into the area of hard work and even hard work and attitude. <clears throat> um, you know, there's been a discussion. There's been a lot of discussion yeah. about like a gay gene, yeah. like homosexual gene. Is it, are you born that way? Are you born gay? There's a lot of debate about, are you born certain ways yeah. or are you learned or did you learn it? Did your environment? Sure. And without you even knowing it, we're getting into kind of complex psychological debate. Yeah. This has been going on in the area of psychology for for since psychology was around yeah, eighteen sure. the eighteen hundreds. I mean, Freud had these debates. Uh, Nietzsche had these debates. Yeah. Um, so I almost want to get. I'm going to move it over here really quick. Yeah, but um, now you just jumped out of the. Don't. It's fine. Oh, oh, we can go right here. Yeah. Go. Yeah, but then I'm out I'm of just it. gonna I'm gonna move it like I'm, try, I'm trying to get his face on here oh, oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this really quick I'll cut this all out it'll, it'll sound fine trust me I'm just gonna get his face on here I might as well do it now I'm so fake I'm still drinking I got you there you go There you go. Oh, shoot. Let's do it more like this. Let's just, I'll just copy you. I'll go like this. <laughs> <coughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> so put it a little bit behind you, yeah. Yeah. Scoot out a little bit. You can scoot out a little bit. Scoot out a little bit. There oh, you go. Gotcha. This one a little bit. Boom. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> cut, cut back to where you were, where we were. <laughs> so, um, so we've been, so they've been having this debate yeah. for many, many years uh, in psychology, in the area of psychology. And go ahead and move that one over um, a little bit more. No, towards you. There you go. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they've been having this debate yeah. in the area of psychology for, for like a really long time. Yeah. For a really long time. For sure. And so, even in regards to whether there's a gay gene. Um, th there was a recent study, probably about five, maybe seven years ago, that showed there actually there, there isn't a gay gene. Yeah. But what I would argue is, I would propose is that your chemical balance, like what makes you happy or what makes you more t prone to be sad. Yeah. That chemical balance is your genetic composition. For sure. How much, like, did you do you know the name of the, um, I don't know if it's a hormone, but do you know what's released in your body? I want to do a Google on that. Like what, do you know like what's released in your body when you feel good? Like no, I don't. Do, do have you, if I, if I told you, um, I seriously don't, I'm looking it up real quick. Like, what is that? So anyways, but, um, okay. So yeah, I knew. Okay. So, uh, it, well, do you know what hormones released in your body when you feel good? I don't know. Endorphins. What was that? Endorphins is a hormone that makes you feel that when you feel good, your body releases endorphins. When you get a massage, you get that tingly like, and it could be sexual. Mm -hmm. It could be f just plutonic, like with a friend, but it feels good. Did you know what food releases endorphins in your body when you eat it? No, I didn't. Chocolate. Oh, well, probably sugar. It's no? chocolate, though. It's not just sugar. It's chocolate. Huh. Not for me. I don't know about sugar. I doubt it re releases endorphins for me. I'm not a big chocolate guy. No, I know that, but there, on some level, you enjoy chocolate. Kind of. Uh, it might not be your favorite, but you en you would eat it. You eat yeah, it. I okay. see you eat chocolate all the time. But never, not all the time. It's never that. Okay, yes. Exaggeration. So, anyways, go back to what what, what you were saying before. It, it really, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's yeah. trust me. It's not going to be that. Okay. All right. I trust you. Yeah, just speak loud enough. Okay. So, so this is the point going full circle to this discussion on genetics. So I'm in a debate with a so assistant soccer coach, and and he believes that he leans towards believing that that an environment, which includes your diet and everything, and training, like good training and everything in an athlete's life has more impact than their genetics. And more impact is a little bit of a stretch. It's going to have a big impact. Yes, but I think a lot of that has to come down to your genetic makeup. Um, you're conf you're conflicting. You're, you're, you're contradicting yourself. How so? You, well, you just said, well, that's kind of a stretch, but it is going to have a big impact, but it well, comes okay, down to your... No, I mean, like, it's going to help you. Like, it's going to help your body... Just naturally, but but like a lot of majority, most of it is going to come down to your genetic makeup. Like a lot of professional, like that's the difference between like you, like you said between a semi professional athlete and a professional athlete is the semi pro athletes some of their bodies just can't take it, and that's not training. Like those guys train twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, yeah. and they eat like like machines. Like right. I need to eat, right. and and. And those, some of those guys just can't do it because right. their bodies can't their body go that far. Down. Yeah, even so, my body broke down right, at a certain point in right. my career. So I think it's silly to argue that when there's literally scientific evidence to to to, yeah. to suggest, and and there's literal physical evidence you can go out and see. You can go talk to those guys, and they'll explain it to you. They'll break well, it down. Well, not just that. Just look at. Just look at. Think of all the thousands upon thousands of athletes out there. 
Oh yeah, there's there's millions that don't make it pro. There's, there, well, and you're there's telling millions. me that this is what just looking at the actual genetic pool in front of you. Yeah, there's athletes that come from the same high school, were under the same coaches. Yeah, in the same environment, came from the same community, so they yeah. eat the same things, and yet some of those athletes go pro, go college, go pro, and most of them don't. Why yeah. is that? It's not environment. They're all from the same environment. Yeah, that's true. It's genetics. It's so good. that's what I would say to you. I think most of it is genetics, actually. I think even your ability, your work ethic, your attitude, yeah. whether you're positive, whether you're more prone to be depressed, I think it's your genetic makeup. I think now, a lot of it is your genetic makeup. No, I, I don't think that's to say that, like, oh. Well, it's not the meaning. It's just like, it's. I'm sorry, it's true. Like, yeah, it just is what it is. It is what it is. But no, but I'm also not saying, like, oh, like, messy to be a great, since he had the genetic genes of a great soccer player, he must have Did come. Did he, though? Was his father professional? I don't know his history. Listen, see, this is what, okay, you're not letting me get to my point. Mm -hmm. His, yes, well, it, it, we just proved he came from the same soccer academy as all these other kids. Yeah. What made him better than everybody else? I don't know. His genetic makeup. He doesn't have to come from a great family of soccer players to have, to, at that moment, your parents, just like when a parent and a man and woman get together and they produce different offspring, each of those offspring are producing a different gene pool from each of the family heritage. Right. And it's that magical gene pool that merges into one child like Messi. Mm -hmm. It's not that he necessarily came from a great family of soccer players, but who knows if they were really exposed to the game. That's true. Who knows if they were horse ranchers and That's they true. grew up around horses. I, I don't know. But even if they were exposed to the game, I'm not saying necessarily that you have to come from a great family of soccer players to be a great soccer player. You're just saying your genetic makeup has to be... I'm saying your, your genetic, genetic makeup at that be, time... has to be... It's like It has to be compatible with the skill exactly. or the trade you're doing. Right. Your, your, gene, your gene composition, yeah. that whatever makes you you, that biological element that makes you you, has to be compatible with what you... The most obvious, the most obvious thing to think of is just a, a singer. Think of a singer. Mm -hmm. Like someone that just, la, they sing. Yeah. Listen, you can watch American Idol. All, I, we just watched a whole session on American Idol. Yeah. And some people got up there and sang and they were okay. No amount of coaching is going to help them be better. For sure. Some of them got up there with no coaching either and were amazing. Like they yeah. just had a God-given gift. Right. And that's just natural ability. And that's just natural genes. It's their genes. Right. It's their genes. It comes down to talent, really. Talent is genes, though. See, no, right. we have this myth in America. I'm going to go. And so this was what I presented to this coach because he's American coach. Yeah. And we, we like to think, what what is the general... Like, when it comes to success and achieving your dreams in America, what's the general attitude of Americans? Um, <clears throat> well, excuses. No, like, no, well, no, no. I mean, not, like, not about success and achieving your dreams. Um, it's it not true. They say a whole bunch of, like, stuff like it comes down to talent. Like, if you're not talented, no, you're no, never you don't make know. It. You've been raised kind of with this. You, you haven't, you think about it when it just think about, think about what your teachers tell you, what your coaches tell you, what your parents tell you about success and achieving your dreams. What's the message you typically have gotten? I'm in blanking, your life? man. I'm not even going to lie. I'm blanking. I'm really tired. I'm blanking. <laughs> you don't know what your parents have told you, coaches told you, teachers have told you. I'm seriously blanking. Are you doomed to fail? Is no. that what you've been told your whole life? No, no, no. What no, have they no. told you about success and achieving they your dreams? They told me if you work hard, then Boom! you can You just summarized it. Americans want to believe yeah. that if you work hard, you can achieve your dreams. Do you know how many businesses fail in the first five years? Uh, what percentage? Most it's probably like 60. It's not most. No, it's yeah. not 60. It is, well, you're right. You're close. It's 60%? 60%. Yeah. Fail in the first five years. I knew it. I knew it. You telling me all those guys out there and women out there running businesses, you telling me they suck? No. No. It's just, just, it's just the odds. Yeah. It's just the Some odds. The chance that your business is going to succeed. It's going to take, as a matter of fact, they say on average, most studies show right now today, do you know how many entrepreneurial endeavors you're going to have to go with? You're going to say you, you got kind of an entrepreneurial spirit. You like entrepreneur. You watch Shark Tank, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times you're probably going to have to start and stop a business before you finally a succeed ton. at one? A ton. Well, just give me a number. Honestly, uh, don't just say a ton. Six times, maybe? Eight to ten times. Eight to ten. They say. Dang. You're going to start eight anywhere from 
you know, say six to ten, you're going to start a business and fail. And you're going to have to get back up and try it again. That's crazy. Until you find something that clicks, man. That's crazy. So it's kind of crazy, man, that in America we're taught, man, if you work hard, you can achieve your dreams. But guess what? You know how many entrepreneurs out there in the world, in the United States, working their arse off? Their arse. <laughs> working their arse off and just barely getting by? Yeah, a lot. Most. Well, and all these little businesses you see on the and side. And they're working street. hard. So what's the problem? Why aren't they? They just haven't got the break, man. They haven't got lucky. And it's and it's there's a little bit. Every successful person I've ever talked to has admitted there's a little bit of luck in success. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's hard work. Sure, I'm not saying, but I'm. I would pose to you guys. I would pose to you guys that that even within the realm of hard work, there's a genetic component. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like there's you, there's you. There's people that have grown up. In, there, there's people in our family, your extended family, yeah. aunts, uncles, whatever, that are lazy. And yeah. we all come from the same gene pool. Yeah. Now, you've been raised in a family that demands that you work hard. Yeah. You sure. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that is a little... So I'm not saying environment doesn't determine anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying environment doesn't determine anything. Right. Well, and especially like in America, we're taught with like um like a you can almost be lazy and be successful attitude, which which is kind of well, How do you how do you see that? I don't, not, I don't okay, see I don't say taught. I want to say our youth almost has picked up on it cuz like now there's social media and stuff and you can literally like Are you talking about like the culture of entitlement? Mm -hmm. Like I deserve a little, Well, a little bit, but not really cuz like you can literally post a video on like TikTok, for example, and get like a billion views in 24 hours, and then you're making money. And so there's this thought process in our youth going on, where youth thinks that, well, if I get a phone, I get social media, I just post on social media, I get one lucky break, and then I'm making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's this almost lazy aspect of America, which is kind of getting rid of what America is for. Like, like we we work, we're told we we're like. We work hard, you know, this is how we've kind of been, like, America's been made, like, by working hard, by having freedom, yeah. and we're kind of losing those things in today's youth. I mean, how do you, what do you, what, how do you feel about that? Oh, I would, I mean, I don't know if we're, so I don't that's think goes, so, I don't that, think it's so that I'll, bad, but I think it's, I think it's pretty serious. I'll, I'll tell you this, Isaiah, um, and not to get too religious, although I don't mind getting religious, and I don't think I should have to apologize for it, in Ecclesiastes, it says that there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Since the dawn of time, since man began to walk, whether you believe out of primordial ooze, evolved from apes, or whether you believe God created us, literally created us, out of mud, whatever you believe, um, man has struggled with different things. Yeah. Uh, sex, pornography, power, yeah. perversion, um, laziness. That's why there's the seven deadly sins. Slothfulness, greed, envy, you know. Um, sloth, slothfulness is another name for. Think of a sloth. Oh, laziness. Laziness. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I, I'm not one. I don't subscribe to the theory that like, the earth is getting worse, you know, oh, the end times. Well, I think it's always been pretty bad. Well, I just think there's ebbs and flows to everything. Yeah. I mean, anybody that, go research, no joke, and I'll give you permission, go research the Roman Empire and see how perverted and, and the, it was actually acceptable for men to go to bathhouses. They had public bathhouses in the Roman Empire. Yeah. And do you know what the men, they could, they could be probably buried, go rape women. They, no, they go rape boys. Little boys. So be, literally, it's all been under the, the down of sun. Like literally, gay, lesbian stuff. It like was it's totally always, acceptable it's, for in a in the er, in the Roman Empire, which was Jesus's time, yeah. bro. Oh yeah. It was totally acceptable for the elite of that society. They That's were married disgusting. with kids. They were married with kids, and they would go to their public bathhouses and sleep with little boys. It's disgusting. Yeah. Now, this is the other thing. Th people think abortion just started. No, abortion's been around forever. Yeah. Do you know in the Roman Empire, if a man came home and his wife had a baby, 
You, did you know in the Roman Empire, they did not consider that a baby until when? Do you know? Until con- conception? conception? No. 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 Till birth? Way. No. Actually, even after birth, it wasn't a baby yet. Really? So it walked? Nope. Till the man of the house said, that's my baby. <laughs> if the man of the house looked at that baby and said, there's no way that's my baby, the maids took the baby out, killed it, threw it away. Wow. I mean, that's basically what they're doing now. Well, it is. Even Just worse. more. More. Yeah. Civilized. So anyway, going full circle to the component of genetics. Again, I th- so George, George, this friend of mine, George, came up with a great title for a book he wants me to write. Okay. And it's called, uh, let me read this title because this title intrigues me, dude. And it actually is, sums up. Um, Dream still fuego, now I'm still dreaming. He said, listen, he goes, <laughs> you should name your book that you're going to write. DNA decides. A father of seven, coach of thousands, and the quest for superior athletes. Ooh, is that like the title description? That's the subtitle. Yeah. The title is DNA decides. Because I'm a firm believer that, uh, and I think, let me, I'm just going to end with this, and then we can wrap up. You could have your closing thoughts. These are my closing thoughts. I'm not necessarily saying, I, I'm saying one, learn to find contentment in life no matter what you're doing. For sure. Be content and be happy, yeah. whatever you're doing. There's, you can have joy, and then if you're not de- com- if you're not genetically disposed to be joyful, yeah. find out what's going to help balance your chemistry yeah. to help make you more temperament, more balanced, more even kill, yeah. and be more joyful. Find out what's your diet. Most Americans' diets suck. Yeah, we suck, true. man. That's true. I mean, I just had fast food today. No, granted. Well, I, I mean, to be honest with you, though, forks don't help. <laughs> our forks. eating utensils don't help. <laughs> That's an ongoing joke between in our families, like um. Forks are the reason Americans are fat because it's the best uh, eating utensil. That's why you see Asians are so skinny because they have chopsticks. Oh, whatever, dude. That's a terrible <laughs> joke. It's hilarious. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. So my closing thought is be happy in, li- in where you are in life. Go ahead, set goals. I mean, there's lots mm-hmm. of tips, and we can go over some of those tips yeah. and goals. That could be a whole session, bro. I can. There's actually experts out there that give you tips on how to achieve your goals yeah. and dreams. Oh, I bet. So I'm, set your dreams. Bank. Set they your bank. goals. I bet you they make bank. Do all that. <laughs> but, but also... Re- accept your DNA for what it is. Yeah. Learn to work with it. And use your strong side. Like learn Use your, your strengths. Strengths and, and your maximize weaknesses. your weaknesses. Yeah. That's my closing thoughts, man. It's true. Yeah. And I think again going full circle like you said, I think it's important to keep perspective. Yeah. And for just sure. to remember like it, like if I don't make it pro soccer, like obviously that some of that's like on my part not eating as good, not training as hard as I could. Not train as much as I could. But some but of it's going to be some luck of it's going to be luck and genetics. And like I have some, pr- I have a pretty decent genetic makeup. Yeah, I got an athletic dad and a pretty athletic mother. Um, but I think it's important to keep perspective. Like, if I don't make it, it's not like my life. It's yeah. like it is what it is, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, those are my closing thoughts. And I think if you viewers are out there. I think it's important to keep perspective. Make sure you keep your perspective. Definitely. In your coffee shops, even though a lot of you guys have been skipping church because of the coronavirus. <laughs> That's what oh, uh, the priest I was at with today, he said that um, he said that uh, we're missing, like, they were missing half their group. Like, half the... Congregation? Half the church was missing because of the coronavirus. Wow. Yeah. COVID. COVID-19. COVID-19. Anyway, so thank you. <laughs>